Governor Glenn Youngkin is putting his COVID-19 action plan into place. The new Republican leader signed the executive order during a visit to Roanoke today. 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett is working for you in our newsroom tonight. So, Lindsay, what is he hoping to accomplish with this? This executive order will lift some red tape and allow health care providers to get the additional hospital bed space, supplies and staffing that they need. Thursday, Governor Glenn Youngkin paid a visit to Roanoke, touring Carilion Roanoke Memorial Hospital before announcing his COVID action plan. Step one, encourage Virginians to get vaccinated. And as your governor, I will not mandate the vaccine. But as your neighbor and as your friend, I am strongly encouraging you to please get it. Youngkin also signed Executive Order 11, providing flexibility to healthcare providers to add hospital and nursing home beds, use telemedicine and outpatient COVID-19 treatments, and allow licensed out-of-state healthcare providers to treat Virginia residents. Carillion CEO Nancy Agee says this will help relieve the burden on staff. Our staff are, in a word, weary, exhausted. We have more patients with COVID in the hospital than we've had at any time during the pandemic. So while some people are sort of trying to move on, um, our staff are working incredibly hard. Youngkin then toured a new VDH testing site and vaccine center at the Valley View Mall. There, Youngkin emphasized the third piece of his plan, testing. Roanoke City and Allegheny Health District Director Dr. Cynthia Morrow spoke about the governor's visit. It's really about working together to make sure that the limited supply we do have goes to the right people and decompresses our, our emergency departments and our urgent care centers. Youngkin is discouraging asymptomatic individuals from testing, redeploying unused tests to schools, hospitals, and nursing facilities, and prioritizing rapid tests for students, essential workers, and those most at risk. These are the kinds of decisions that we have to make right now, and I think they're the right ones. The executive order and limited state of emergency expire on February 21st. Live in the newsroom, I'm Lindsay Kennett, 10 News, working for you.